One afternoon in 2015, Lisa Bennett was at home when she received a phone call from a man identifying himself as Jason Dean, an investigator with the U.S. Treasury Department. Jason informed Lisa that she owed over $5,000 in unpaid taxes, and because she'd ignored their notices, the department was ready to arrest her. Lisa was stunned. She'd never received any notices about tax problems and confidently told Jason he'd made a mistake. But Jason insisted his records showed a missed payment in 2011. Lisa began to worry. She had once owed a few hundred dollars in back taxes, which she'd promptly paid. And when Jason transferred her to another investigator, who also threatened to arrest her, she felt panic coming on. What if she'd made another mistake? What would happen to her partner, Kate, and their two school-age sons if she went to jail? The investigators explained Lisa had one chance to avoid arrest. Immediately withdraw the money from her bank account using a special tax voucher and tell them the number. Lisa looked at the clock. It was 5, 10 p.m., and her bank closed at 6. Now panicking in earnest, she quickly told her eldest son to call Kate for help. Then, with the investigators still on the line, Lisa rushed out the door. By the time she arrived at the bank, Kate had texted several times, insisting the call was a hoax. But Lisa didn't know what to believe. Bursting through the doors with just 20 minutes to spare, she breathlessly explained her situation to the bank employees. Instead of withdrawing her money, they calmly told her to hang up the phone. Kate, they explained, had called the police and then called the bank manager. And they all recognized the tax investigator call as a scam. Lisa was flooded with relief and embarrassment. In retrospect, the scam seemed obvious and she promised herself she'd never again be tricked by a frightening phone call. Breathe in now. And out. Phone scams, sometimes called phone phishing or spoofing, are increasingly common. As Lisa experienced, criminals may impersonate other companies, bank agents, or even government agencies to trick you into divulging financial information or sending them money. Never give sensitive information to an unexpected caller. Instead, politely end the call. Seek support from a supervisor. Look up the supposed caller's number yourself and call back to confirm their request. For today, imagine you've received a phone call from someone claiming to represent the government who asks for your organization's bank account information. Write how you'd respond and who you'd report the incident to. Remember, as Lisa learned, phone scammers operate on fear. So don't panic.